when I asked, when I thought to myself, what would be, you know, the thing that I remember most, well, there's an event or a strange sort of series of events um, that happened on my first Hajj that I always think about. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was asked to tell uh, about some of my experiences um, on Hajj. I went for Hajj twice, uh, the first time by myself and then the second time to take my wife. Uh, and we, we traveled from, from Qatar to uh, Mecca. It was a pretty short trip, alhamdulillah. Um, uh, when I asked, when I thought to myself, what would be, you know, the thing that I remember most? Well, there's an event or a strange sort of series of events um, that happened on my first Hajj that I always think about. Um, and that is, it, well, it started when we um, first came to the, to, to the, to the Masjid al-Haram. And of course, I remember that I was very excited to see the mosque in the Kaaba for the first time. Um, but when we came across the hill or came over a sort of rise and there's an empty space, uh, as soon as we could see the mosque, what we saw in front of us were um, a, a large number of African children uh, spread out in the open space, um, many of them having you know, some kind of deformities or injuries. And, you know, for example, I remember one holding out a sort of mangled hand. Um, and they were all chanting something and they have buckets hanging around their heads and they're all kneeling on the ground and there was a large woman and covered in niqab kind of standing to the side watching them so so that was almost kind of like a horror movie i mean we were just ready to see the, the sacred mosque and then we see this um so it's, it was the first experience it was quite shocking uh, and it left kind of an impression on me. Um, and specifically, I saw uh, one young girl or one very small girl with apparently like no arms or like her arms are, you know, severed or, or missing from, from here. And she's holding them out and waiting for people to put some money in the, her bucket. Um, so, <clears throat> Yeah, the first thing that crossed my mind was, you know, well, how can, you know, this place, which is sacred city, be, how can it be, be allowed that, you know, children and people are treated like this in this place? You know, how can the, the, the authorities of this country, where they're supposed to be the custodians of this place, for example, allow this, you know? Um, so I was like deeply disturbed. And of course, when, when, we're, when we're finished, now this was, the initial, the first sort of trip to the mosque, you, you start with um, in the Hajj. Um, when we came back to our residence, you know, Hajis were discussing it and some people said, well, you know, there are people who take these children and use them to make money. So they think or they claimed that this girl's arms were cut off by the people who want to use her to, you know, send her out to beg um and then somebody else said that she really has arms but we're hiding them behind her her garment you know like like this so um yeah so i didn't know what to think right and it was deeply disturbing like in general it kind of went with the whole experience um whereby you hear we're here at, uh, at a place where you go inside the mosque and, and everything is um you know holy and peaceful and everybody is worshiping together but outside the apps you know you feel that you know it's surrounded by you know the, the absolute corruption of, of of you know i guess human humanity human society right and uh the distinction or the contrast between what we need from from god and what god gives us uh through obedience to him and worship and you know what he expects from us and, and 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 what the world is actually like outside you know the world's not like a paradise it's not a utopia um but anyhow uh these things are always going through my mind uh but 
the, and the reason is because I kept seeing, well, I don't know, the reason this, this went along with the experience, I kept seeing the same girl with no arms. Um, and we, uh, in particular, during our trips to uh, stone the pillars, she was always there because these kids were always, you know, um, there placed in the route wherever the pilgrims go, right? And uh, so I saw her a couple of more times, I guess to make a long story short. Uh, and in between there, I want to encourage anybody who, inshallah, if you get the chance to make Hajj, try as hard as you can to walk uh, during from Arafat to uh, to Mina when walk through Musdalifah and, and I was lucky that uh, a couple of friends of mine that I made there told me they were going to walk and leave the group and, and not stay on the bus because the experience of walking was much better than sitting on the bus for hours and hours actually that seemed to me when I did it that the experience of walking in at least in terms of the subjective experience of the Hajj the actual walk was was really the one of the main things um, but uh, during this time of going to Stone the Pillars, uh, I saw the same girl uh, a few more times. And so finally, on the way back from the Pillars, when I was walking back and I saw her, I really needed to know whether somebody, whether she had arms. Um, and so I came and, 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 you know, when I passed her, I felt back her, her in her back and I saw that, that yes, indeed, as the person said, she had her hands like this and, and and so she did have arms and so I was really happy because that means that she had arms and that somebody didn't cut her arms off <laughs> um, as I was told by some people and uh, there was a, a a West African brother walking beside me I mean I didn't know him but he asked me well, what's wrong what, what what's the matter and I was so happy you know and I was telling him she has arms she has arms right and it's a very silly <laughs> Um, and I, maybe he thought that I was saying that because I was angry that she was trying to fool people or something, but it was in fact the opposite. I was really happy. Um, but he said, um, she has arms? I said, yes. And he said, well, let it be that. And then he has uh, in his hands a bag of chips and he asked me, you want some chips? I, I said, no, I was just, <laughs> it's just it's, it's strange. Um, so uh, on walking back, I was crying all the way back to Mina, and it crossed my mind that actually uh, Shaitan would like you and would like us to think that the world is worse than it is. But I thought to myself that it seems like that's his, his sort of strategy or tactic to overwhelm us with the image of the evil in the world when, you know, the Quran says that the, the good outweighs the evil, even though it may appear that the evil outweighs the good. So it was very uplifting. Um, I don't know if Allah has planned. I mean, obviously Allah has plans everything and, 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 and coordinates everything. And uh, this series of events uh, seemed to me to, among many things that happened during the Hajj, um, to be something that I'm supposed to learn from. So I took that uh, experience. Um, and so the closing of it was, alhamdulillah, the last time that I... Um, made uh, went to stone the pillars um there she was again with her arms sort of bound behind her back and when, even though she had arms obviously somebody has put her arms back there um and so she can't really use them uh, and she's sitting there in, in the very hot sun I and mean, this is difficult for us because Hodge is just to to walk and then like we have I mean I have my bottle of water and I can drink from the water when I want to but you know, here's this girl, she's made to sit there, you know, uh, for how, who knows how long under the hot sun. So the only thing that I, I had an unopened bottle of water. So the next time I passed her, I'm not sure if she recognized me as the person who harassed her before. But uh, um, I thought she might be probably thirsty, obviously. So I opened up the small bottle of water and came in and, and, and poured some water down her her mouth I was thinking she might be afraid of me but no she was thirsty and she opened her mouth and I put some water in her mouth and, and so I was happy at least to make up for having probably scared her before <laughs> um, so there was the story and I guess the take home from that is right uh, 
there does seem to be a lot of evil in the world, but Allah is in control. And shaitan would like you to think otherwise, but it's not true. Thank you for listening to my little story. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.